All right, so I'm in the truck heading over to get my trailer and then to pick up the S2000. So it's corner balanced, it's aligned, it's ready to go. The last thing left to do is to do the dyno tune. So we're gonna go do that at Inline Pro now. And then uh, a couple of guys uh, privately rented on that. I got an invitation, so I was very happy. And I'll be able to get on the track during the shutdown and uh, we'll be able to socially distance and be responsible there. It's it can hold thousands and thousands of people and it's less than 20 drivers. So I'm gonna use that as a test and tune day to dial in the car, uh, see where it's at, see what it needs, make some adjustments. The only unfortunate part is that I can't bring anybody. So normally on a test and tune day, you'd have somebody checking your tire temperatures, brake temperatures and pressures and making adjustments. And then you go back out and you come back in the hot pit, and make some further adjustments, do some analysis and kind of go from there. But since it's a limited event, it, you can't have any crowds or anything like that. Uh, I'll have to do all that myself, which is gonna require getting in and out of the car. And uh, it's better than nothing. So first things first, let's get this dyno done. I'm gonna go to Inline Pro to get that. We're gonna tune the thing using Flash Pro and do a max power tune uh, just for when I wanna play around with the car. And then we'll go further and start reducing the power and uh, using the drive-by wire to take some power out of the car so I can reduce it to fit into the class. The goal for the class is to get down to 194 average horsepower. So that should put me somewhere around 205 peak. And then the peak number I'm gonna estimate to be somewhere around 230. So if the car makes 230 to the wheel uh, uncork, that's a very healthy S2000. So let's see how close I get to my guesstimate. I'll report back. So I got the preliminary dyno tuning done with the Inline Pro and the car made some pretty good power. The car ended up making 227 to the wheel, which is a really good number for an S2000 with just bolt-ons on it. And then I worked a little bit more. I went back to Inline Pro and then uh, I did a little bit of remote work with Mikey Singhaseni, who knows a couple of tricks specifically for the class uh, in terms of detuning of the car. Let's try to maximize for the class. So at this point, I probably had about 100 pulls on the car and uh, pretty close to where I wanted it. Uh, finally, I went back, uh, had a little issue with the RPM leads at Inline Pro with the dyno. And uh, those guys were very uh, generous and didn't charge me for the pulls at the end. But I did uh, get some more tunes dialed in. So I had to find another local shop, which I did. And uh, their RPM lead system was working a little bit better. So I did a little bit more tuning after that. All right, so I've been on the dyno for about an hour now. I did about 40 something pulls. And what I'm working on is getting this thing detuned for the class. Uh, the car probably has 120 pulls on it. I'm trying to find that optimum detune. So <laughs> believe it or not, at 45% top end uh, throttle at around 8,000 RPM, it still makes like 205 horsepower. So I'm trying to get around the 215 range. Uh, so we'll just mess around with it. of a 2006 to 2009 S2000 is the ability to tune the car using the factory engine control unit as well as a Flash Pro. So those two tied together make a nice tuning platform without having to go with a standalone engine computer system, something like an AEM or a Haltech. So this has a lot of OEM type functionality built in with just some, uh, some adjustments here and there. So the 2006 to 2009 car specifically used drive-by-wire throttle which makes it very simple to detune the car. Normally, you would have to put on a restrictor plate to detune or pull back some timing. But with the drive-by wire, it's very simple. And all you do is go and reduce the throttle plate using the throttle target plate measurement graph here. So this tune specifically is a 75% top-end throttle tune, or a detune in this case. And what it does is lower my peak power from 228 wheel horsepower and gives me a pretty flat power curve and it's down to about 210 wheel horsepower, which is ideal for my class. So 
here you can see the rows and the columns. You can put in exactly what throttle percentage you want for what throttle setting and at what RPM you want it. So this is a real simple one. We're targeting 75% throttle by the time we reach 8,000 RPM. And the way that it looks like on a data log, I'll show you here in a second. So we'll just pull up the 75 at the top and you'll see in this dyno graph that as the RPM is down here at 5400 RPM, we have 100% throttle plate. And by the time we get about to 7000 RPM, it starts reducing the throttle plate gradually. Basically, your foot stays on the throttle, but the throttle body starts closing up till it reaches the target throttle plate that you had set in there. And that gives you a nice flat power curve and takes some horsepower right off the top. So really nice, easy way to detune these cars without timing and without any sort of restrictor plates. Okay, so I spent three days on the dyno, did about 200 pulls, and it was starting to get to be a lot of information. So I organized it all. I took really good notes and I put it into a spreadsheet. And I narrowed down the tunes from, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 of them, down to two main ones. And I narrowed them down using the best wheel horsepower maximum to the best average horsepower, which is what NASA uses. So that required a couple different throttle tricks that I did. And ultimately I landed on having a 211 horsepower to the wheel tune that gives me 200 average and one that gives me 221 wheel horsepower that gives me 205 average. And that ended up to be tons and tons and tons of dyno runs. So it was a lot of work but it was worth it. And I'll go through here and show you guys what some of these tunes look like uh, compared to the old car, compared to the new car, AP1 versus AP2, and a few other things. We have two tunes pulled up, the higher horsepower, the 220, and the 210 horsepower tune that I mentioned in the previous video. So it's really about 220 and 211, one being 205 average horsepower on a 2000 RPM average, and the other one being 200 horsepower to wheel on a 2000 RPM average. So you can see it's real simple. As we get past 7,000 RPM is when the throttle starts pulling back. So these two cars or this one car on two different tunes is basically making the same power all the way to seven. And then all we're doing is shaving some power off the top here. So there's your about 10 horsepower reduction. Just uh, starting around 7,100, 7,200 RPM or so. So it's pretty neat, nice, easy way to detune it. So more interestingly enough, let's do a comparison of my last S2000 which was the national championship winning car. It was a AP2 S2000. It made 214 horsepower to the wheel. And it had basically the same mods, except that it did not have a tunable ECU on it. So let's pull that car up compared to the new car at similar power rating. So that's going to be run 21 and 7. We'll hide this one. So here you'll see the old car is making 214 horsepower to the wheel, which is about 199 wheel horsepower average compared to the 211 that the new one's making. So only about a three horsepower difference. But the big difference here you'll see is that the power curve on the red one, which is actually the new one in this scenario, is significantly greater in the mid-range all the way up to about 7,400 RPM compared to the old one. So I'm making massive gains all the way down from 5,000 to 7,300 RPM or so, with the sacrifice of just losing about three horsepower to the top. Now, when you shift this car at red line, being 8,150 RPM, it goes down to about 6,400 RPM. So this is all periods of time where the new car with the tunable ECU is gonna have significantly greater acceleration due to having much more power under the peak of the curve. And then in addition to that, there's a lot of tracks like Summit and VIR, um, lightning where you'll have a couple of slow corner exits they're actually down in like the 5500 rpm range to 6000 rpm range at corner exit in third gear and in these tracks uh, turn one in particular at seven point in vir it's not worth shifting the second gear you'll actually end up going slower so you have to dig out of that corner with less power in third gear so you, you see here depending around where you are it's almost about a uh let's call it 25 horsepower different right here at the exit at that RPM. So that's massive. Uh, the power band is just significantly better on the tuned car versus the untuned car from my car on uh, the specific track that I ran at. And what I have overlaid here is the speeds as well as the RPM. And what's neat is in the new R2000s using CAN bus uh, and an AIM Solo DL 
you're able to pick up all sorts of things that you couldn't pick up on the older cars, uh, such as their fuel and steering angle and individual wheel speeds and throttle plate percentages and a number of other things that you can pick up. You can pick up brake voltages and uh, there's more. I'm still learning about it. Anyway, more importantly, what we have here is the RPM range for the car overlaid with speed on the top. And the way that I look at it to determine if I want to have uh, power at the peak or in the middle, there's no really tuning for low end on the S2000 because it just is not possible with such a small motor. I look at where am I at RPM wise most of the time. So here you can see I'm at 7400 RPM and below significantly more than I am at 7400 and above. So that's kind of how I made the decision for this particular track that I wanted to focus more on the mid-range. Now, everything is a compromise, right? So the last car actually had more peak horsepower and less average horsepower than the new car does, but it had a very peaky RPM, uh, peaky power band. The new car actually has less peak horsepower and also more average horsepower because I tuned it a lot more under the curve. Uh, but I think that's going to be an advantage because if you see the amount of times that you're digging out of a corner at lower RPM or uh, shifting like in right here in these cases, and cases like that right over here or exiting slowly here, you'll have 10 to 25 more horsepower than a comparable car without a tune. So that's what I'm using to make my decision. Of course, everything's a trade-off and a compromise. Uh, maybe the more powerful car is gonna be faster on other tracks. Maybe it's not, maybe under the curve matters more. These are all things that need to be tested and uh, only time is gonna tell, but I think I'm on the right path. So a lot more tuning to do, a lot more data logging to do and the nice part about it it takes about 90 seconds to flash the car so any friday test day i can run a horsepower tune that's high and a horsepower tune that's low figure out what's working better for that track i can adjust my ballast accordingly and it gives me options so that's that the car is tuned i have a few different dyno tunes one for a lower horsepower track and one for a higher horsepower track and a couple of miscellaneous tunes for times that i might need them there's a few more things I did not go over in the video, a few racers tricks that are built into some of these tunes that are going to give me a uh, fair and legal advantage over some other drivers in the class using uh, similar cars. So I uh, can't be giving away all my secrets just in this build video, so uh, we'll see how effective these things actually are on track. In addition to that, there's a lot of talk about just one horsepower here, two horsepower there. And just a reminder, for this class, it's quite significant. It's almost about 14 to 15 pounds per horsepower that you have to add to the car. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It adds up quick. Five horsepower adds up very, very fast in weight. So other than that, the car's actually already been on track. A little bit of a hush-hush event that was not allowed to be shared with people. So I'll wait for things to start opening back up and normalcy to happen before I post those videos. But... Long story short, the car ran very well. The only issue I had was with the uh, OS Gaiken. So I used settings from the old car, which had an OEM Torsen, and I didn't really adjust too much for the Gaiken. So now I've added a couple more parts to the car and adjusted a few things to be able to handle the power, uh, the way that Gaiken puts down the power a lot better. So I'll have some more information on that. Currently the car is back at P-tuning, some more corner balancing, some more aligning. Uh, some more setup changes, and I'm hoping to get out to New Jersey Motorsports Park in June if that does open up, and a few other events, hopefully Hyperfest after that. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you guys learned something and picked up some valuable information.